Hi, my name is Ron Rogers, and this video is titled Flying with Difficult Captains. And this captain, I, I can't hide his name because his name was the same as mine, Captain Rogers. Um, although I ended up being a captain a lot longer than he was. But he was of the earlier era of captains that, that could be rather difficult uh, to fly with. And uh, no, I never grabbed his tie. I never shouted at him. But um, <laughs> we did have an interesting time. And I don't know of anybody who liked flying with this guy. In fact, people had pencil sets, number two pencils inscribed across the pencils. I survived a month flying with Captain Rogers. And there was a few other captains that also um, got their own pen and pencil sets or pencil sets. Let's put it that way. Now, we were going to fly together, and we are going to fly in the 727. He was captain, I was co-pilot. And I thought this was cool. The guy had my same last name, you know? So I, I come up to him, and I hold out my hand to shake his hand, and I said, hey, this is really cool. I'm, you know, first officer Rogers, and you're Captain Rogers, and we get to fly together. That's really kind of cool. He looked at me, put the papers in my hand, and said, make sure we get the fuel load. I increased it. And he walked away. Of course, he had already flight planned. He'd already looked at the weather without bringing any of the other members of the crew, myself or the uh, second officer into play. And, uh, that was it. He went out to the airplane. Now the, uh, we, we were flying to, I don't know, LaGuardia or something like that out of Chicago. It was just an out and back, just a, a, a little quick one day turn. And as we're going out, he's flying the first leg out. And the second officer knew that I was on the new aircraft, the Alpa National new aircraft committee and had, uh, just come back from a test flight on the Airbus 320, and we were doing all sorts of neat, interesting stuff, and he wanted to talk to me about it. Well, this caused a little bit of a problem because uh, this captain didn't like uh, any co-pilot to get the idea that maybe the co-pilot uh, had a little more involvement in aviation or was doing some cooler things that... Um, than, than the captain was doing. In fact, after this whole event was over, the second officer apologized to me and he goes, yeah, eh, captain probably felt that if anybody was, should be doing something like that, it should be him, not you. So, um, I get the leg back and he is absolutely riding me on every, every little thing, uh, air speeds, you know, a couple knots off and the, the autopilots on the 727 weren't very good. Wasn't very good. Uh, I, I almost made it sound like there was more than one autopilot. There wasn't, there was one, uh, not like triple redundancy and things like that. So, uh, and, and you flew, uh, you hand flew the aircraft mostly. So we're coming into Chicago and he says, I want 1100 foot per minute rate of descent. So okay, I'm doing that. Well, it shallowed out to a thousand. He says, I told you 1100 feet per minute. And, and that was the whole thing. By the time we landed, I was ready to kill him. I never wanted to fly with this guy again. I had had it. This is a case where you fly with a guy and you go, am I working with the same airline that I was working with last week? You know, because this is a whole different experience here. Well, as luck would have it, of course, everybody's moving up a little bit. And he moves up to the DC-10. So I'm going, great. I never have to fly with this guy again. I am happy as can be. Well, time goes on. I move up to the DC-10. And I get paired with him on a trip. It's a trip from Chicago to Detroit and back. Slightly less than an hour, very short trip. But I'm thinking, okay, I got to figure out how to work with this guy. This guy had a super ego, a God complex. And um, I'm thinking, okay, he's a Marine. Now, not an ex-Marine. He'll, he'll explain in great detail that there are no ex-Marines. Once you're a Marine, you're a Marine. And I mean, what you go through, okay, I can see it. You know, uh, that's, uh, if you go through that, it's a bad badge of honor. Not problem. I was a, no problem. I was an Air Force veteran, but that, uh, that's not a Marine pilot, you know. But anyway, I figure, I got to figure out how to relate to this guy. So first of all, he doesn't want co-pilots to think that they have, you know, any sort of knowledge of flying or anything like that. So, I developed kind of a two-step plan. And the first thing I did was I, when I approached him, I referred to him as Sir Captain Sir. Now you're probably going, you got to be kidding, right? And most captains would have looked at me and said, my name's Jack, you know, but that was fine with him. And the entire time that we flew that short little one-day trip, I addressed him as Sir Captain Sir. 
And the other thing I said to him, although I'd been on the DC-10 for eight months, and I think by then I had a pretty good idea what I was doing, I said, uh, Sir, Captain, Sir, I am new on this airplane. Any tips you could give me on flying, any help you would give me, I would really appreciate it. You know, it, it just, it, it would help me so much. So I'm fanning his ego there. And he looks at me and says, oh, we're all new sometime. Okay. So we get on the trip. He flies the leg to Cleveland. I'm flying back. And uh, no problem. Everything's fine. Uh, he doesn't say a thing to me. He doesn't criticize any of the flying I'm doing. We come in and land and uh, get off the airplane. And the second officer uh, comes up to me and after uh, uh, Sir Captain Sir has moved away. And he says, man, I haven't seen him be nice to a co-pilot ever. I mean, he just, he was nice to you. And uh, that was amazing. Well, okay, we're done flying. And, and I never flew with him again. But that's not where the story ends. Now at the time, typically you flew with the same crew the entire month. So if you had a good experience, that was great. If you had a bad experience, well, it was a long month. I come into operations and the flight planning desk uh, was at the other end of the room. And as I walk in, Captain Rogers turns to me and goes, Ron, how you doing? And virtually every co-pilot in the room looks at me and their jaws drop. And I go, Captain, sir, I'm doing fine. Uh, I left off the first sir there, uh, but I'm doing fine. So um, one of my friends, Bob, comes up to me and he says, he likes you? And I go, well, we got along okay. And he says, okay, you got to tell me. I got next month with him and I, I'm dreading it. He says, what did you do? And I said, okay, Bob, first thing you do is you address him as Sir Captain Sir. Bob goes, I'm serious here, Ron. What, how do I do this? And I go, I am serious. You address him as Sir Captain Sir. Tell him you're a new co-pilot and you know, you'd love any instruction he can give you and stuff like that. And Bob says, you better not be putting me on. I go, I am not. So he comes back to me a little bit later. He's flown a few legs with him and he says, my God, that worked. And uh, he had he had a good month with him. And the funny thing after that, I never flew with Captain Rogers other than myself being Captain Rogers, but I never flew with this Captain Rogers ever again. But he would call me, he was my best buddy. He would call me up and said, hey, do you got an extra set of the bid sheets I could get from you? And you know, every time I came in, it was, hi, Ron, how you doing? And it was just amazing that, uh, that one little trip, uh, uh, we got along fine after that. And it just really <laughs> kind of confused, uh, the rest of the co-pilots, but that's how you can deal with a difficult captain. One, one of the many ways. And that one is the way that worked with this guy. Thanks for watching.